Hi, I'm Jack Nielsen. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand, and I live here in Hong Kong. Uh, so I came to Hong Kong to play rugby. Um, I was lucky enough to go and play for a team called the Hong Kong Cricket Club. Uh, lots of Kiwis, Australians, South Africans, some local players as well. And uh, when I got here back in uh, 2011, I thought I'd only be here for a few seasons, and here I am seven years later. Um, so back in New Zealand, I played in the Auckland competition. Uh, I played for a few clubs, uh, Waitakere City, Suburbs, uh, Eden, uh, Roscoe Districts. Uh, and what brought me over to Hong Kong was really a chance to play rugby in a different place. Uh, I'd never really been to Asia, uh, so to play in Asia uh, was, was really fun. And, uh, and that's basically why I came here. Uh, if you ask most people that have played in Auckland or in New Zealand, the rugby is a lot more physical. Uh, here in Hong Kong, maybe not as physical, but it's still pretty fast, just because we play on the old Astro turf, and it's a, it's a quicker game, I think. Probably the biggest thing I miss about home is, is family, obviously. Um, so, the, you know, Skype's great, but it's not the best thing. And obviously the food, uh, Pacific Island food, Samoan food, very filling, probably not the best for the waistline, uh, but I always look forward to going back home to, to eat the food, so it's really good. Uh, so my dad was from Samoa. Uh, he was raised in a village called Aayafiti and uh, my grandmother, so dad's mum, was from uh, Mutiatele, which is in Alipata, and granddad was from uh, Vaie Safata. So all on Opolu, uh, so you know, always nice to go and visit those places as well. On my mum's side, I'm Māori, so I'm Ngāpuhi, so uh, nice to be Samoan Māori and uh, yeah, a bit of Danish and Scottish in there as well, so I'm a bit of a fruit salad. Um, back when I was in New Zealand, um, I had actually done a bit of uh, a bit of boxing and a bit of MMA training, uh, and then when I came over to here to Hong Kong, um, I got involved with sort of the local fight scene. I uh, got involved with some of the boxing events here in Hong Kong, uh, club fight night. Uh, which is uh, where you have rugby clubs that put in fighters. We have raised some really good money for charities like the Operation Breakthrough. Uh, and also get involved with some organisations like uh, Just MMA and uh, a programme called Just For Good, which I actually help with now. And that's an opportunity for people to raise money for a charity of their choice, again, uh, fighting inside a cage. So some people will run a marathon, some people will climb a mountain. Uh, I'm quite happy to get punched in the face to raise money for charity. Uh, so since I've been in Hong Kong as well, uh, I've been involved with uh, the Hong Kong Rugby League. Uh, myself and a few other people, Neville Metcalf, I mean, as you can see, whoop, as you can see by the jersey, Rugby League is growing in Hong Kong. Um, we're very much the little brother of Rugby Union. But the great thing in Hong Kong is that Hong Kong is very small. And we've been well supported by Robbie McRobbie and the Hong Kong Rugby Union. Uh, and I know for myself and guys like Neville Metcalf, who's the chairman of the Hong Kong Rugby League, without their support, uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we've done. Um, all our players are rugby union players uh, who have a bit of a league background. So, you know, we've played game test matches against Japan. We just played this year in the Emerging Nations World Championships in Sydney. Uh, that was a great learning experience uh, and hopefully the, the first of many international tournaments for Hong Kong. And even more so, it's been great to be involved with uh, Women's Rugby League. I think that's another area that can really grow for Hong Kong and even mirror uh, what the women's 15s have done. They went to an island, the World Cup in Ireland. I think our women could go to the next uh, Rugby League Women's World Cup as well. So like uh, most guys that come to Hong Kong, um, I've been in a few sevens ads. Uh, so they're always looking for players to, that look like rugby players at least. Uh, and so that was the first time I've sort of done any TV work. Uh, and then a very good friend of mine, uh, Semi Arfeta, uh, funnily enough directing this show, uh, asked me to become involved with uh, Gualo RFC. And uh, that's been really fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, working alongside the other actors and learning from them. And uh, Semi's a pretty good actor and director himself. Um, he's been teaching me accents and how to move and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it's nice to be involved with something a little bit different. And like most Samoans, you know, we have a few talents. We wear a few hats. And uh, being in front of a camera isn't something that comes too hard to us. So uh, lucky that Semi's pretty good with the CGI effects. Gives me some muscles on screen, which is good. So my character on the show, uh, his name is Khan. He's a Mongolian wrestler. Um, he's like a lot of people that come to Hong Kong. He, um, he's a family man. He's got kids he needs to look after. Uh, so he needs to work. Uh, but he still 
you know, likes to be involved with different sports. He's more of a wrestler. So on the show, when Coach Wheeler asks him to come and try rugby, he hasn't really played it before, um, but the coach manages to convince him, tells him about The Rock, who just happens to be one of his favourite wrestlers, and, uh, and the rest is, is history. We go from there, so he's pretty funny. Uh, I wouldn't say not too, he's not too bright, but, um, you know, uh, we'll just have to see how his character develops over the series of the show. Uh, so here in Hong Kong, I still play at the Hong Kong Football Club. Uh, probably most people's favorite club in Hong Kong. Everyone loves us. Uh, and, oh, there you go. And uh, while I don't play as much these days, I definitely enjoy the coaching side of it. Uh, I coach some of the lower grades, uh, some of the women's grades as well. And that's the one thing about coming to Hong Kong is getting that opportunity also to coach, uh, whether it's at club level or even age group national level. Um, I think it's a nice transition again for guys that are a bit older that can share their experience and uh, you know sort of again help that next generation of players come through. So here in Hong Kong there's a few of us Hummels, there's a few Samoans, uh, you know some of the guys that have been here a lot longer, guys like uh, Malamba Chief uh, and Tavita and Hogan, uh, Tumalatai, um, guys that uh, you know family men, uh, they work hard in the community Guys that play the game, that coach the game, that are involved at club level. Um, and you know, we all catch up and we all get together now and then and put down an umu and have some fun. Um, but I think that's important. I think it sort of mirrors what happened back in New Zealand, say back in the 70s, you know, 60s and 70s and even earlier when Samoans came over to New Zealand. And it's nice to have other Samoans here, other, just like other Kiwis, just like other Australians. You need that support network and you need to help each other and that's what we've done. And again, a lot of those guys have gone on uh, and played, for example, international rugby as well. Guys like Semi Feta, uh, guys like uh, Andrew Wonky. Uh, so all these guys, and they're doing really well. They're, they're big names in their fields, acting, directing, uh, fighting for wonks. Uh, and they, so they, they set an example, sometimes not the best. Uh, but it's good to, to be a part of that community and that way, you know, whenever other Samoans come here, we can support them. When the Samoan team comes for sevens, we can look after them. And that way, when other Samoans come here, you can always find other Samoans around the world. Probably my favourite rugby memory would be probably my first sevens. Um, you always hear good things about sevens, not just dressing up, but the whole experience. Um, so yeah, yeah, probably my first sevens, really enjoyed that. Uh, the South Stand. Bit of a blur, but I know it was a good time. So I definitely enjoyed that. First rugby memory, I used to play back in the UK in London. It's just too cold. Uh, I don't know why people decide to play in minus zero, deg uh, you know, zero degrees. It's just silly. Rugby should be played you know, on a nice sunny day, or at least the grass is kind of soft, so when you fall down, it doesn't hurt as much. But again, I'm from Auckland, I'm a bit soft. So, but yeah, rugby in the UK. Probably my favourite rugby player growing up uh, was Olo Brown, tight head prop, uh, quite softly spoken, but just did his job and uh, was a really good player. Uh, and he also had options off the field. You know, he's, I think he was an accountant, so a very smart guy. You got to be smart to play in the front row, otherwise, you know, you go play in the backs. We just stand there and look pretty. So definitely Olo Brown, favourite player and really good guy. So I'm lucky. I've uh, I've got two kids, I've got two boys. My youngest boy is here in, uh, in Hong Kong with me and I spend most of my days sort of looking after him and watching him. Uh, my oldest boy is back in New Zealand, uh, so while that's a bit tough, I get to see them as much as I can. Uh, but for me, being a dad's the most important thing. Before being a rugby player, before being a rugby coach or a fighter, whatever it is. Uh, but I'm a family man, I love being a family man and uh, there's nothing else I'd rather do, so very lucky. Uh, so, Miss here, Jody, uh, Tay's mother, she uh, works for Associate Generale, so in a French bank. Uh, so, very intelligent. Hopefully, well, Tahi has her uh, intelligence because uh, he doesn't want mine. Maybe my looks, but not my intelligence. But uh, yeah, again, it's, uh, she's, she does well. She plays rugby as well, which is nice for the uh, Sandy Bay Storm. Um, probably the biggest thing for MMA uh, or training for MMA or fighting is getting a chance to train and fight with some of the professional guys around Hong Kong. Uh, guys like Alan Nalani, Leandro Nada, even uh, guys that are actual fighters, professional fighters, but they're so good with their time. They share their experiences, they train well, and if being a punching bag for them helps them get ready for their fights, uh, then it's a, I find that the most uh, 
the, the best experience and very humbling as well. So and if, again, if I can help out in any way, to train with those guys is, is a lot of fun. So my favourite rugby league player was probably uh, Martin Bella, as you can see by the moustache. Similar build, uh, and he played for uh, the old Manly Seagulls in Australia back in the day. Didn't really look like a, a rugby league player by his, today's standards, but he was probably my favourite player growing up, watching the old Manly Seagulls. A lot of teams and a lot of people in New Zealand supported Manly because they had a lot of Kiwi players, you know, the Ira brothers and all that sort of stuff, Daryl Williams. Uh, but no, definitely Martin Bella. Shout out to the, the, to the big man. Uh, so I spend most of my days at uh, Ozone Fitness. Um, and I usually start about 5.30 and go to about 9.30, 10.30. I'm in there most days helping people maintain their dad bods. So if you have a dad bod and you want to maintain it, come and hit me up. Uh, it's a really good gym to train at. Um, it's a boutique gym, but don't let that fool you. We, we train pretty hard. And again, like I talked about before, um, it's nice to, to work in a place where you have to train and you can train because in Hong Kong, you can be very busy and not have an opportunity to look after yourself. And so for me, being able to do that myself, but then to help other people do that as well, uh, is very important. It's been really fun being on the show. Thanks for having me, Simi. Um, as we sort of go into that festive season, look after each other, enjoy yourself, uh, travel well, travel safe, and we'll see you on Rugby Asia Channel in the new year. Peace.